Well, as you can see, gigabit internet is available in my area now. That's like 1 gigabit per second, which is like 1024 megabits per second, which again is like 128 megabytes per second, which again again means I can download a 1 gigabyte file in 8 seconds. So should I upgrade to this gigabit internet? I mean my current internet plan is like 300 megabits per second download and 30 megabits per second upload. And to be honest, it is already very fast. But this is gonna be three times faster, which is awesome because faster is better. But there's a disadvantage and that's the cost. It's gonna cost me around twice as much as what I'm already paying for my current internet plan, which is gonna be a lot. Besides, I will also need to buy a new modem because my current cable modem is a Doxis 3.0 and is rated for up to 340 megabits per second download and up to 120 megabits per second upload. So I will have to buy a new modem which is approved by my ISP for this gigabit internet. Maybe something like this or this, which is gonna be another extra cost on top of the extra monthly payments. And let's be honest, internet is already very expensive in the United States. I mean, according to this website, it has the seventh most expensive ADSL or cable internet in the world. And I don't want to make it any more expensive if I'm not going to use it. That's why I better find a way to calculate how much of internet bandwidth I really need based on my internet usage and then decide whether I should upgrade or not. Or even downgrade. I mean there are some websites that can help you to find what's the right bandwidth for you based on your internet usage. They do this by asking some questions like how many people are using internet in your house, how many devices you have and what kind of services you use. But I actually decided to come up with my own method. Why? Maybe for the same reason I never go to a barber shop and I cut my own hair. But just as a disclaimer, the method that I use here is actually very specific to my network requirements here. And also because the technology changes every day, the information in this video will get outdated soon. So if you want to make any changes to your internet connection, or if you want to calculate your own internet bandwidth, definitely consult with your internet service provider first. Okay, so first of all, I want to know what is the minimum bandwidth required to run each of these internet services smoothly. And to find the answer to that, I'm actually going to connect my computer directly to the wireless router. So this computer at this point is the only client device that is connected to my network. And on this computer, I'm going to use each of those internet services one by one and each one for five minutes. Then I'm going to check the traffic analyzer page of my wireless router, which has some sort of a bandwidth monitor. This is actually where I can see the maximum bandwidth used during those 5 minutes for each of those internet services. Which in other words, it's the minimum bandwidth required to run each of those services smoothly. For example, I went through some text-only websites for 5 minutes and this is the results I got in the traffic analyzer section of the router. As you can see, there's a graph that shows the incoming and outgoing traffic during that 5 minutes for the WAN, which is the internet connection. I'm not interested in how much data was downloaded or uploaded in that 5 minutes, but instead, I want to know what was the maximum bandwidth used during that 5 minutes for the incoming internet packets, something that I have up to 300 megabits per second available which is this number, but it is in kilobytes per second, so I'm gonna convert it to megabits per second and round it up as well. Technically, this is the minimum internet bandwidth I need to have to be able to browse some text-only websites smoothly. And this is actually the results for everything else. Now, as you can see, I have generously rounded up the numbers. The reason for that is because these are the minimum required bandwidth for each service. But I want to make sure when I calculate the total bandwidth for my home network, it is going to be something more than the minimum. I actually rather be safe than sorry. Also, as you probably have noticed, I only focused on calculating the download bandwidth. But there are other factors that are important too, such as the upload bandwidth. 
but unfortunately my ISP doesn't offer many different upload speeds and even if I upgrade to the gigabit plan that would be only for the download and upload actually would be limited to 35 megabits per second which is not much faster than my current upload speed. But in case if in the future I will need to calculate the upload as well, I can do it the same way I did it for the download. Latency is also very important, especially for voice over IP, video calls or online games. If the reason behind a poor latency is my own hardware such as wireless router, maybe using quality of service can help to improve that. It is actually something that I talked about in another video and the link is in the video description in case you want to check it out. Basically, if I'm experiencing some kind of speed problem in my network, it doesn't necessarily mean that my internet is not fast enough. It could be related to a bottleneck in my own local network. I should first troubleshoot and see where the problem is. I actually have another video talking about how we can do that. The link to that video is also in the video description. But the focus of this video, as I said earlier, is to determine the right internet bandwidth based on my internet usage. That's something that I'm going to do next. Basically, now I'm going to think of like the busiest and most extreme case of my internet usage here. I mean, the most bandwidth uh, intensive one. And that's when I'm streaming a 4K video on my TV, at the same time streaming a 1080p video on this monitor and checking out a heavy website on the other one which I guess is called multitasking. So based on these numbers that I came up with before, that adds up to 50 megabits per second. Wait, what? Does that mean I should be fine with a 50 megabit per second internet? Not necessarily, because I haven't taken into account downloading files yet. Well, that alone justifies upgrading to the gigabit internet. Not necessarily. I would add a number between 10 to 50 megabits per second to the previous number for each person who is using the network. For example, 10 megabits per second for someone who doesn't download any files. Or maybe he does, but very rarely and very small files. And 50 megabits per second for someone who downloads large files and very regularly. That pretty much means a 100 megabits per second internet bandwidth for download is enough for me. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have more and I already have like three times more than that. But the gigabit internet is going to be just too much for me, at least for now. And chances are, if I upgrade to the gigabit internet, I won't feel that much of a difference. I mean, the only thing that might be faster for me with the gigabit internet is when I'm downloading files. But that also depends on whether the server that I'm downloading from or my own hardware in my LAN can handle this extra speed, which is something not worth the extra cost for me. But if there were like 10 or more internet users here, that probably would have been a different case. Okay, so I guess now I know, even though this internet bandwidth is something very important, it doesn't mean that all my speed problems are related to this, or maybe to the ISP for that matter. It could be related to my local area network as well. For example, if I'm watching an online video and it keeps buffering and pausing, it could be maybe because my wireless network is interfering with my neighbors and has nothing to do with my internet connection. So I should first troubleshoot and see where the problem is. So basically the quality of the local network is just as important as the quality of the internet. I mean, if you follow my videos on this channel, you probably know that the majority of them are actually about how I can somehow improve the quality of my network. For example, by using an old wireless router and setting up a repeater or an access point to extend the range of my Wi-Fi. Or by taking advantage of some of the features that exist on my wireless router and I didn't know how useful they could be, such as uh, VPN or quality of service. And if you are new to the channel and interested in those kind of videos, definitely subscribe and make sure you activate that bell notification so you won't miss the upcoming videos. Alright, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you liked it. Hit that like button if you did and share it if you think others might like it too. Thank you again and I will see you next time.